So do you enjoy it more now that you're out here? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I built this whole thing right, right to the road. Really? By myself. Yeah. It took me quite a lot of time, but there's some nice sunflowers here. But so I, what I tried to do, and some people have noticed it. So like, it's got a little slightly different construction. I was trying to make the, the post kind of like a, like one of those inukshuk things. Oh, right, yeah? right, right. That's, yeah, that's the see, idea yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. For me, one of the chronic dilemmas has been how much to say and when. I know lots of things that, uh, you know, you'd have to take some anti-nauseants after because it's so distasteful. How, higher, how much higher can the stakes be than this? I mean, it's billions and billions of dollars, and yet the system is set up in such a way that, that it can be corrupted easily. It's, it's, it's child's play to corrupt the system now. Uh, nobody's standing up and saying, you know, what they should have said. That's good. Guess we've got half an hour. Boys want to be rolling by three o'clock. I watched this whole story from the very beginning. Like I, I, I was one of the investigators that was contacted at the very beginning when the interference trial was planned in 1986-87, and I was the principal investigator of the Serono study with Rebiff. I was basically wrote the paper for the first interferon study, and the, 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 I fell out of uh, out of sync with things when I couldn't get the pharmaceutical industry to do the studies that were really needed, which is looking at long-term outcomes, where you reached a point where something really important was happening, like the development of progressive disease. We 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 couldn't get them to do it. I mean, I can tell you that you know a couple of them told me frankly, like why would we do this? We're selling lots of drug. We're making lots of money. The, doing that study can only be bad for us. If it shows that, that it does work, then we'll be right where we are right now. If we show that it doesn't work, we've lost the whole ball game. People accuse me of being anti against pharmaceuticals, but this is not true. If there was a drug that convincingly demonstrates a significantly slow long-term progression, I would probably take it, but I haven't seen it. There's almost no evidence that, 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 that any of these drugs make a difference in the long term. What they do very cleverly is leave the impression that it's going to make a difference in the long run without actually saying so. The, 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 that's where the controversy began because when pressure was put on them 20, 25 years ago to carry out the studies and make them longer and reach harder outcomes, let's say time to... Um, needing a cane to walk, the Food and Drug Administration were the only ones that had the power to enforce this. All they had to do was say, okay, you don't get the long-term outcome, no approval. And there's nothing more motivating from a pharmaceutical company than to tell them they're gonna have their license for the drug jerked if they don't comply. They never did it. I'm not happy, and you shouldn't be happy, and patients shouldn't be happy. I wonder why MS patients are injecting or swallowing MS drugs that may cause serious side effects or even death, but have not been proven to be effective in the long run. It's hard for patients to ask those questions. You know, it's where the, where the physician is, is intended, for the most part, to step in. And if the physician is already you know, compromise because they're on some major drug company kind of, uh, you know, uh, income stream. It, it, sac it sacrifices or impairs their ability to do this well. In the United States, for example, the New York Times had an article a few years ago about how many physicians have a financial relationship with the pharmaceutical industry. It was over 90% in the United States, over 90%. And why do taxpayers around the globe pay billions of dollars for MS drugs that have been demonstrated 
to have no long-term effect. Follow, you follow the money, you always follow the money, and you find out that somebody who is being relied upon to deliver an objective assessment of whether or not this drug is showing a useful effect is also on the take in a big way from the, the institution that stands to gain the most from there being a positive effect, i.e. the pharmaceutical company, right? Get ready, here are the side effects. Back pain, blood in the urine, burning or stinging of the skin, continuous uncontrolled back and forth or rolling eye movements, decreased sexual desire, difficulty with, difficulty with moving, ear pain, fast breathing, irritation of the mouth and tongue, loss of appetite, menstrual pain or discharge or, or changes, menstrual pain or changes, muscle pain, painful cold sores or blisters on the lips, nose, eyes or genitals, sensation of motion, usually whirling either oneself or of one's surroundings, speech problems, vision problems. Jesus. So that's Capoxone. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> and then uh, here's the other one. What are you looking at? <laughs> that's bad, man. Especially if these didn't work. There's interferon. Headache, increased sweating, lack or loss of strength, nausea, sore throat, stuffy or runny nose, unusual tiredness or weakness, vomiting, double vision, seeing double, weight gain. No, let's just oh, stop it. It's too depressing, man. It's not easy. <clears throat> it's making me think. I think as far as treatment of these very expensive medications go, they do have potentially serious side effects. I, I know that I, I wouldn't be taking it myself. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't be taking it. I just, I'd rather take my chances with the natural course of events rather than introduce something else, which is the risk of who knows what. And the more, the more new or recent the drug is, the bigger the who knows what is, right? Because there's just not enough information. So I think, I think you're perfectly defensible in not taking anything. The MS Society of Canada, they have never, ever stuck their oar in to this controversy, except, if anything, to kind of diffuse it or deflate. You've never heard from the society that um, these outcomes weren't being met. And you should be hearing it from the society, right? Or they should, at the very least, be supporting people who are prepared to stand up and say this. Is, is, is anyone from the MS Society of Canada here? Pardon me? Anybody? No. No. There's, there's, there's health at stake. There are the interests of uh, poor, vulnerable people. And there is a huge amount of money at stake. I, I remember saying to the, the guy at the FDA, you know, someone shoots you dead for a parking space, what will they do for a billion? And the answer is plenty. But now we have to, we're giving people hard information, right? And people didn't like listening about the MS Society of Canada, people didn't like about the sponsorship. But now we're like, yo, maybe you don't like what's going on in your life too, right? That's a different view for someone with MS. And I don't know how they're gonna react. Are they gonna be angry as hell at me? Or are they gonna turn it on the societies and the drug companies? I hope it doesn't come to me. It could come to me. The number of MSers in wheelchairs, walkers and canes, has not declined. If they have objective measures. So what is going on here? Because I have not seen any convincing scientific evidence that any drug has a notable effect on the long-term progression of multiple sclerosis. We did it, man. <laughs>